I'll show you the process for developing a RAW file in Affinity Photo for iPad. On the welcome screen, I can tap hold on New and choose Import Document or Import from Photos. Import Document opens the file browser and Import from Photos lets you pick an image from your photos library. Alternatively, I can also tap Open, then choose one of my RAW files here. When a RAW file is opened, Affinity Photo automatically moves into the Develop Persona. This is a dedicated workspace for making various adjustments to the image before developing it and moving on to layer-based editing. We have a set of corrective tools on the left and the ability to make adjustments to the image via the panels on the right. The Basics panel contains fundamental adjustments, such as a linear exposure adjustment, allowing you to shift the image's exposure in stops. Double tapping on any slider handle We'll reset it to its default position. We also have black point and brightness sliders, allowing us to change the overall brightness of the image and remap the black point where appropriate. Within the Enhance section, we have options such as contrast and clarity, the latter of which can be used to accentuate or reduce textural structure. And the saturation and vibrant sliders can be used to control the intensity of colors in the image. I will momentarily cancel development here and open another example in order to look at white balance and shadows and highlights. Shadows and highlights lets us boost or reduce specific tones that fall into the shadow and highlight tonal regions. White balance is used to control temperature and tint and can be used in conjunction with the white balance tool located here on the left. If I tap on a white surface of the building here, the tones will shift. This is a rather inaccurate approach. A sensible step would be to measure off a proper white balance card, but it can be useful sometimes to discover what kind of white balance shift is needed in order for a bright, near white surface to be neutral. You can also tap drag with the white balance tool to continually update the white balance as you move around the image. The temperature and tint sliders can of course be changed manually, and you can tap on the actual readouts here to input precise values. Temperature is generally understood as it follows the Kelvin scale along the Planckian locus or black body locus, and most natural light sources fall within this defined range. Tint, however, is used to correct deviation from this black body locus and is predominantly for artificial light sources that can have strong magenta or green spikes or tints. The tint slider is therefore quite important for any type of photography that features artificial lighting, such as fluorescent bulbs and LEDs. These two white balance sliders can also be reset to their initial values by tapping the reset icon here. Moving across to the lens panel, this is where we can apply various lens corrections. Where possible, Affinity Photo will infer lens corrections from metadata. In this case, lens corrections for my Olympus lens are supported and applied. In addition to the automatic corrections, you can correct general, horizontal, and vertical distortion, as well as rotation for crooked horizon lines. Like with the basic panel, double tapping on these sliders will reset their values. Finally, a small trick for wide-angle lenses is to reduce the scale slightly. You will often find that because of the heavy distortion correction being applied, there is extra detail hiding outside of the current crop. Going down to 95% reveals an alpha area at the bottom, so I will just set it to 96%, and by reducing the scale, I've gained slightly more pixel information in my image. Other options on this panel include chromatic aberration, defringing, and lens vignette removal. These are generally taken care of by the lens correction profile, but you can experiment with them manually if you wish to. I'll move back to the previous image I was developing, where I can also quickly apply the lens correction scale trick. On the details panel, there are options for noise reduction and sharpening. Although do be aware that you can apply these non-destructively as live filter layers in the main photo persona, which may be preferable. By default, Affinity Photo will perform color noise reduction 
which leaves luminance noise intact and helps to maximize apparent detail and texture in the image. You may still wish to remove some or all of this luminance noise, however, such as the noise in the sky here. I can just move the luminance slider up until the noise disappears. We then have the Tones panel, which allows us to apply a small subset of adjustments to our image, such as curves and a black and white conversion. Manipulating the color contribution sliders allows us to achieve quite a dramatic black and white render of our image. The settings are stored if we disable this adjustment, so we can quickly toggle it on and off. The metadata panel lists basic shot information stored as EXIF data in the RAW file. If the image is geotagged, its location will also be resolved here on the map view. The overlays panel facilitates selective adjustments based on a brush or gradient mask. For example, if I select the overlay paint tool, increase the brush width, and begin painting, a new brush overlay will automatically be created. I can now switch back to the basics panel and can use various options here, such as brightness. You can see on the image that this is only affecting the brush overlay area. If I need to refine the painted overlay area, I can select the overlay erase brush and erase away from the sky and background mountain area. There is also an overlay gradient tool. With it selected, I can tap drag to draw out a gradient over the sky area. Then I can reduce the exposure slider, mimicking the effect of a graduated neutral density filter. The gradient can be adjusted at any time, as long as the corresponding gradient overlay is selected on the overlays panel. To switch back to making global adjustments, I can select Master. Then I will find making further adjustments will affect the entire image. Before developing, I can also compare the initial result to my proposed result with all the corrections and adjustments. To do this, I can tap up here to enable a split view. With the split view, I can tap drag to alter the position of the column so I can easily compare the before and the after. Tapping on this option again switches to the mirror view, which presents the same image area side by side, allowing me to pan and zoom around both copies simultaneously. Once I am happy with the processing results, I can develop the image. If I want non-destructive RAW capabilities, I can make sure my output here is set to either RAW layer embedded or RAW layer linked rather than pixel layer. I'll then tap the check icon to develop the image and move to the main photo persona where I can perform further editing using non-destructive layer-based editing. Because I changed the output to a RAW layer, when I have this layer selected on the Layers panel, I can re-enter the Develop Persona at any time by tapping up here and choosing Develop. The development settings from the last session are restored, and I can modify the settings if I wish before developing again. And that was a look at raw development on the iPad version of Affinity Photo. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.